So hi, and very glad to be here now. And so let's talk about the sneaky net. So first question, um, how do you use the internet to share files today? I, I want to hear, you know, what you're using, like the mail, for example, FTP, SCP, so SSH, yeah, and email. Jabber, yeah, Git, Torrent, etc. Dropbox, this one, yeah, Dropbox. So um, here, maybe you you know this comic. It's um, a 949 comic on XKCD. And what it say is that sometimes um, it's faster to just grab a new USB key to share file between machines than using the internet after all these years. It's really, really incredible because you just have to, you know, use the same applications, have an account on Dropbox or on Jabber or whatever, you know, your IRC, deploy your web server to share files. It's, it's just incredible. So let's say that every time you just, you know, send yourself an email, it's just, just crap because think that your file is encoded in, in you know, base 64 it, on your server, it's just, just crap, you know. So let's talk about sneakers. So a sneaker net is a term to talk about, you know, a network that say that, that there is someone with sneakers that grab a USB key and that transmit data between machines. So um, the feature, the features of this network is, is that there is a potentially an high throughput because Imagine like, um, you know, a big plane with USB keys in it. You could send a lot of data, really. But you have a high latency. And one uh, key feature of this kind of network is that it's privacy friendly in the sense that we don't, you know, uh, surveil what you're doing when you're grabbing a USB key. We don't, you know, collect data. So it's kind of privac privacy friendly. And so to build the sneaker net on the internet, we need uh, a privacy friendly open source, of course, web application that doesn't ask me for an account on whatever, or on, yeah, that doesn't collect any data on me. That's how I you know, think about the best ac application for this kind of usage. So let's talk about pipes. Pipes, it's a pipe for files in a, as a web application. So it's a small web application that is easy to deploy and easy to, to use. And that doesn't keep any data on you or on your files. So as it's free software, you can deploy it on your server if you want. And of course it's, it's a, um, a free software, so it's free as in freedom. Uh, we'll see the license at the end. You, you'll realize it. So, what is the plan? So, so to share the file with files, you just go to the web page, choose the file, and then there is nothing. I know. <laughs> so then there is a link, and you can give a link to give this link to to a friend, and then he will be able to download it, and you will see that your friend is downloading your file. So it's it's kind of cool. But at the privacy level, so what I'm doing? Do I just, you know, upload files and then store it on an hard disk and then delete it after a certain time? Maybe I do that. But actually, no. I don't do that. I don't need to because I don't store any data on the server, really. So to understand how it works, we will see a little di diagram. So the ID is um, you just connect to, to the web page via WebSocket, and it gives you a temporary user ID, and it will allow you to register files to, to share with your friends. But as soon as you create a link for your file, you don't upload data yet. It's not uploaded yet, but the file is already available. You can already give it to your friend. And what I'm doing is that the link is just a reference on the people that are providing the file. So when you're giving the link, it just 
ping the server, and then he asked to your browser to stream the data to the server and to forward it directly to the downloader. So at any moment, I don't store any data. I don't need to, because I just forward the data to the downloader. And so this way, there is no arbitrary limit um, on the file size, and it's just the time you want to put in, in your file sharing, the limit. So it's, it's kind of um, tall. And for now, so it, you, you have to go through a server. But uh, next, I plan to use you know, other things. So for example, uh, for now, the transport protocol don't use binary. There is no more uh, a reason for that. But uh, when I started to work on pipes, um, I needed to encode data in base64 because WebSocket didn't support binary, but it's no more the case. So uh, it's one of the features we need to implement in the future. But it's just a, just a, a few changes. Maybe XHR too, because you know if you want to use a browser that don't support uh, we uh, WebSocket, maybe you want to use uh, XHR too, and so maybe it will help you to support um, other browsers. And then there is WebRTC, of course. So I'm part of the WebRTC apps team at Mozilla, and we are building WebRTC apps now. And WebRTC, if you don't know it, it's uh, real-time communication in the browser with peer-to-peer con peer -peer connection, um, basically. So with this kind of technology, you could transfer the file directly with it uh, using the server. And this way, it will be faster and even more privacy friendly. Uh, so I have an instance online. You can use it right now. It's pipeline.org. And so you can see in real time the statistic about you know, the changements, uh, the file um, exchange between people, the amount of data, the total amount of data that is exchanged on the, on the web service. And of course, it's FLGPL licenses. Uh, it's really important in this case because I wanted uh, a protection for the users to, to uh, allow people to deploy and modify the server, but to sell it to users. So RFLGPL is not only a choice, but it's really, really important. It's a part of the project itself. And, and so that's it. So are you any question, maybe? Um, is it one-on-one uh, -on -one only, or is it, uh, can I share it with multiple persons at the same time? Uh, the link that is generated, you can just you know, give it to an IRC channel if you don't want. So the link is uh, available as long as your browser is open to share the file. So the server doesn't store any kind of data on that, so there is no cache or this kind of thing. So you have to open your browser as long as you want to share the file, and the link will be available as long as, as you do that. And then you can share with um, any people you want. And so uh, the, the, the way a file is created uh, is when you choose a file, it creates a certain page that can, you can share with other people to share another file with you. So it's like a room to share files. Are you aware of file T? And if so, how do you compare to that? Um, file T. File T? Yeah, it's very similar. Mm, same. I'm not sure. I, is it a kind of uh, uh, the same service? Yeah. And is it a free software? Yeah, it's GNU Agent. Yeah, I don't know about them. Because I, I, I knew a lot of uh, you know, con concurrent projects, uh, but most of them didn't uh, were free software. Um, and some didn't do the same thing, like for example, the link was a uh, one shot link. But uh, yeah, I, I will definitely ask you to, to give me a link on that. Mm. Okay. So uh, when, when, when you share a file, the user has to be online and connected and, and the browser has to be open. If you compare it with the, with the other Jabber, sharing the file with a Jabber or sharing the file with other, uh, very, when you are online, so how do you compare it besides just a web mm. based? The, um, this web service doesn't ask you to, for an account. 
So you don't need uh, Jabber account to use it, for example. So if you want to share a file with someone that you don't really know, actually, like, you know, you're um, in a room and you just want to share a file with someone, but you don't know his email or you don't know his Jabber ID, or doesn't maybe even have a Jabber, you know, account, and you don't have to tell him, okay, make a Dropbox account or make a, a Jabber account, because you don't need to, you just have to give him, give him a link. That's, that's the right. ID. Don't ask for an account motto. Yeah. Another question? Hey. Um, okay, say you want to be really anonymous and you want to send a file to somebody who can't know who you are. Can you make it so that uh, they won't connect directly to your own IP and they will have to connect to the server? Or is that defeating the whole purpose of pipes? Mm, when I say privacy friendly, it's that I don't collect any data on the public instance. And if you don't, if you deploy your own uh, instance of, of the web, uh, web application, uh, you can trust it. But uh, I don't do much more than HTTPS for the encryption thing. So and there's no. I mean, you you won't cache anything on the server ever, even uh, if it was uh, requested by the user. If Oh, it could be a, a temporary cache, like something that says it either, could be a feature. Mm. either connect directly to the person or cache it on the server and hide my mm. IP. It, it could be a feature. I'm not sure I want that because, for example, on the public uh, version of pipes, uh, I don't have to take care about the hard disk. So if I want to store something, I, I, I will be you know, forced to think about that. And I don't want to do that for now. But it could be an, op an option. Bonus question, have you tested it on Tor? No. And, and you? Did, did you try it? <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. Thank you. Another question? Hmm? Question? Do you have any plans to support end-to-end -end file encryption? Uh, so yeah, I didn't. Uh, um, do you have any plans so um, the entire um, connection is encrypted between the individual users, so a malicious server can't sniff the traffic or whatever? So are you asking that, um, uh, like, encrypt the file uh, without the server knowing about the content of the file? Exactly. Like End-to-end -end encryption. Yeah. Uh, it's it's a hard thing to do, uh, I think, because uh, without asking for input from the user, uh, at least. Because if you do it automatically, uh, automatically from the server, the server know what kind of JavaScript was served to the user. So you still have to trust the server. But then you could use like something else, I don't know, like you know, ask for an input, but still you can act you know, the JavaScript like, at the server level. But yeah, maybe the solution would be to encrypt the file before sending, it, say sending the file to, to, to someone, yeah. I think it's a, it's a good way to do that. Encrypt the file if you really don't trust the server. 